That's a modern animated take on Michelangelo's classic, The Creation of Adam. You know, just the story of a bearded god, his clean-shaven creation, and a little finger action. Ah, uh, but is there more going on here? Did Michelangelo and others create a veiled message that God is all in our heads? That's the theory presented in the paper Brain Imaging in the Renaissance, written by Alessandro Paluzzi, Antonio Belli, Peter Bain, and Lara Viva, and published in the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine. It was the Renaissance, after all, a period of artistic and scientific rebirth. Suddenly, old religious and philosophical notions about the nature of reality weren't so set in stone. New ideas caught fire throughout the Western world, and this new spirit of curiosity inevitably led great thinkers of the day to the human brain. Those thinkers included natural philosophers, surgeons, and even artists. For instance, in the early 16th century, Leonardo da Vinci conducted experiments to reveal the anatomy of the ventricular system in the brain. These experiments involved hot wax and a dead ox, just another day in the artist's studio, but it pushed Leonardo toward the existing Christian belief that the ventricles were the abode of the rational soul. Sure, that's not quite what modern neuroscience tells us, but certainly the notion of the soul and the experience of the mind resides in the organic brain. And so just look at the images of the divine and three works of Renaissance art. First up, here's The Transfiguration of Christ by Raphael Sanzio. Are those clouds or the Holy Spirit behind the ascendant Jesus, or is that the brain. Paluzzi and company suggest that this might be the case, with the clouds shaped to resemble a bisected brain. Elijah, there on the left, stands in for the brain stem. So arguably, we're looking at the Holy Spirit, that third aspect of God that Christians believe resides in the believer, as the brain. Now let's look at Gerard David's painting of the Transfiguration of Christ. Here we see Jesus, Elijah, Moses, and right there at the top, the bearded God of heaven himself. Now compare that with a drawing of the midline sagittal section of the human brain. This would place God in the third ventricle, Elijah and Moses in the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles, and Jesus stands in for the brain stem. And finally, let's return to Michelangelo's creation of Adam. Frank Lynn Meshberger, MD, made headlines back in 1990 when he pointed out this whopper. God and the heavens swirling around him are shaped like a human brain, an anatomical image that Michelangelo, like so many educated artists of the day, would have known quite well. Meshberger's interpretation is that we see God God giving Adam the gift of intellect, symbolized by the brain. Of course, this is all conjecture. Some art historians dismiss such interpretations, insisting that all the elements in these paintings have their roots in the art culture of the day. Still others, such as Dr. Graham Smith, an authority on 16th century art at the University of Michigan, believes that the idea of God equated with the human mind would have been quite attractive to these artists. After all, Renaissance scientists at the time were trying to establish the sections of the brain and their function in intelligence, and maybe, just maybe, a few Renaissance artists decided to include tongue-in-cheek send-ups of religious themes in their commissioned works. So what's your take? Are there hidden brains in these paintings of the divine? And does God exist solely in the human brain? Let us know in the comments below, and to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.